Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to spawn and destroy entities from mono behaviors using the entity manager. So of course these are some features part of the entity component system which is part of Unity's data oriented technology stack. And the concepts in this video sort of build off the concepts of the previous video that I made where I show you how to convert traditional game objects into entities. So in just a traditional mono behavior script, we're going to be converting these game objects into entities and then spawning them and destroying them within our world. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, you might be interested in the video that I recently made where I recreated the classic Unity Rollerball tutorial using dots and ECS. That video does a good job at showing you the basics of how to create a project using dots and ECS, and it can show you how the concepts of this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data-oriented technology stack and entity component system. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. And if you do want to download the project files featured in today's video, make sure you use the link right down in the description. All right, so here I am over in Unity. I'm using version 2019.3, and Dots is still in the preview phases at the time of recording, so I do have some preview packages included. These are the preview packages I've included, so go ahead and include those if you'd like to follow along. All right, so I just have a pretty basic scene set up. I just have this sphere, which is kind of hovering above these four planes, which are all kind of angled towards the center. Uh, so when we hit play, the sphere will drop down and then just kind of roll to the center here. Kind of building off the concepts of the last video, the sphere as well as the four planes, they all contain this convert to entity uh, component. So when we hit play, the four planes as well as the sphere will be converted from game objects into entities. And you'll see that they're all interacting um, with physics, just you know as we'd expect. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can spawn this sphere through code. So the sphere is looking pretty much how we want it to. So we can just go ahead and drag the sphere into the prefabs folder here, and then we can just delete the sphere out of the scene. So we're left with just the four planes, which will be converted to entities. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new C sharp script. This will be the spawn controller. And then I just have this empty game object called game manager and I'm going to drop the spawn controller on it. Now then we are in the spawn controller script and of course I'm going to import the uh, unity.entities library and this is going to give us access to some things to convert our game object to an entity and then spawn our entity through code. So I'll just clear out all this default stuff here and we're going to need a few variables. So the first one is going to be a public game object for our sphere prefab. And then we're gonna do some private variables. So we'll do a private entity for our sphere entity. Next, we're going to need a private entity manager. And this is actually what's gonna allow us to spawn and destroy these entities through code. Then lastly, we'll just need a private blob asset store. So now we'll go ahead and create an awake function. And then here we can set up the entity manager. So we'll set this equal to world.default game object injection world dot entity manager. So this basically specifies which entity manager we're gonna be using. In this case, we're gonna be using the entity manager from the default game object injection world. Now in the next few lines of code, I'm gonna be converting the game object into an entity. And you can reference the previous video if you want a deeper explanation on all these things. So essentially we just need to initialize our blob asset store, which allows us to create our game object conversion settings. And once we have the game object conversion settings, we can use the game object conversion utility with the function convert game object hierarchy to pass in our game object which is the spear prefab as well as these game object conversion settings and once we do that we'll end up with the sphere entity however the sphere entity doesn't actually spawn it in the world or anything like that we just now have that reference to the sphere entity and one last thing we need to do in the on destroy function is just go ahead and dispose of our blob asset store so I'm gonna go ahead and make an update function and I'm gonna to say if input dot get key down passing in key code dot s is when we'll actually spawn our entity and so we'll want a reference to this entity in case we want to use it later so we'll just say entity we can call this the new sphere entity so we'll set that equal to entity manager dot instantiate 
And then here we just pass in the entity, which of course is the sphere entity. And that's all we need to do to spawn the entity in our world. So we'll go ahead and save the script. And when we come back to Unity, you'll see that it's asking for our sphere prefab. So we'll just go to the prefabs and drag in the sphere here. Now we can go ahead and hit play. And so now that we're actually loaded into the scene, we can hit the S key. And you'll see that the sphere spawns into the world and it starts rolling around. Now, um, if we wanted, we can keep just spamming the S key and it would just continually spawn all these spheres into the world um, if we wanted to because it's just basically spawning a new instance of that prefab. So that's basically how you spawn entities. Now I'm gonna show you how you can actually destroy them. So I'll go back to the spawn controller script and I'll create a private list of entities and we can just call this spheres of course in the awake function we're just going to want to set uh, spheres equal to a new list of entities just like that and then what we do right after we spawn our new entity we can just say spheres dot add passing in our new sphere entity. So now we have a list of all the spheres in our scene. And basically what I'm gonna do is when we hit the D key, it's gonna go ahead and destroy all the sphere entities. So I'll say if input.get key down, passing in key code dot D, I'm going to iterate through each of the entities called ENT, in spheres spheres and again we're going to be using the entity manager so we'll do entity manager dot destroy entity and this time we just pass in ENT. Then after this for each loop, we can just say spheres.clear to clear out that list. So it's pretty similar to instantiating an entity, but all we do is just call destroy entity and we pass in the entity that we want to destroy. So go ahead and save this. And when I come back to Unity, I can go ahead and hit the play button here. And now I can hit the S key to spawn a bunch of these spheres. And then when I hit the D key, boom, they're all deleted. So of course we can go to our entity debugger and you'll see that when I hit the S key, we're spawning all kinds of new entities. I hit D and they all get destroyed. So that is how you can spawn and destroy entities from mono behaviors using the entity manager. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it helpful, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the data oriented technology stack and Unity entity component system. Don't forget to watch my Unity rollerball tutorial so you can see how the concepts in this video apply on the broader scale of a full project. And of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.